Hey guys, this is Chris Fate coming back at you. Uh, today I'm going to show you how you can hack into any game to get quick, fast level ups. Instead of having just to go up uh, XP just a little bit at a time, uh, just about every single time we kill a monster, we're going to go up a level. I'm going to show you how to do that. And this can be used, this technique can be used for just about any game out there. Uh, Except for little tweaks here and there, but other than that, you know, the format is exactly the same. And we're going to be adding on to past lessons that we've already uh, went over. So, uh, it's going to be real good. So, if you just stick with me, we're going to go ahead and use uh, Darksiders 2, the De Definitive Edition. Uh, which is the perfect game to show you this on. I'm just going to start a brand new game, and we're just going to start from scratch. And I'm going to show you how to hack the XP... And uh, every single time we kill a monster, every time that something writes to our XP value, we're going to go up a level. It's going to go up to the next uh, level, and then to the next level, to the next level, and so on and so, so forth. And uh, I'm going to show you how that's done. So stick with me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get into the game here. And we will... Uh, I'm just going to start a brand new game, actually. So let's go ahead and get that started. While it's doing that, I'll go ahead and attach cheat engine to it. There can be no life Oops, without order. Bad. Good, evil, darkness. No, yeah, that's right. Okay. There must be balance in the universe. We'll go ahead and bypass all this mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he would resurrect humanity. All right, I'm gonna cut my um, infinite horse stamina on just so I can get there. Uh, as you can see, I got a ton of codes for it, and I'm getting a ton more. I'm gonna have infinite reaper where you can turn into the reaper anytime you want to, and it don't count down. I've already done that. I accidentally uh, deleted it by mistake, and uh, so I'm just gonna have to do it again. But I'll do that later. Also, uh, when I get done with all the cheats I'm going to do for this game. I am going to upload it to Mediafire, and I'll put the link down in the description, uh, probably on a later date. Uh, you can have that if you want it. I'm using just the uh, Definitive Edition. So if you have this version, it's the 1.0. If you have that version, you're welcome to use these cheats. Uh, they do work. They work great. As you see, I've already got a quick level up on here already, but I'm going to do it from scratch on a brand new cheat engine. Also, there's something I was wanting to show you. While I'm thinking about it. Well, let me just get to where I need to be with the horse first, and then I'll show you. Let me just do that. <clears throat> As you see, I've already got infinite stamina for this guy here, so... There we go. All right. And just for the time being, I'm not going to use this cheat engine. I don't want to confuse anybody. But I want to have my, uh, this right here is my strength value. Let me get to that screen, sorry. Over here, here's the uh, stat screens. You can see I've already hacked all the stats. I just don't have the others on yet. Um strength 999 basically I can kill anything with one hit so I'm gonna use that particular code to do that what I want to show you I want to use this pointer and I'm using pointers for this is uh, I want to put that in a brand new cheat engine but I don't want to rehack it and do it so what I want to show you is a little trick that uh, I guess a lot of people did know but it's not really thought about that much nobody's actually really taught anybody how to do this but if you want to transfer your cheats over to an, a fresh cheat engine or anything, this is what you can do. You can highlight the cheat you want and then just copy it. Bring up a notepad like this. And just paste it in there. 
and it'll have all your pointers in there and everything. Let me change the name of it right quick. I'm right here in the description. I'm going to change that to uh, Max Strength. Like that. And what you do is click on File, Save As. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And I'm just going to name it uh, Darksiders 2. And change that .txt on the end right here. Just change that to CT. Like that. That means cheat table. It's short for cheat table. And just click save. And look at that. We have it up here. Now I can just... Uh, let me make sure I got all my work saved on this one first. I'm just going to click save and exit that one out. And I'm going to bring up this new one we just saved from Notepad. I want to show you. Look, right down here, it's it brought our pointer over. All our pointer, our pointer is in there, and we just need to attach it to Darksiders. And yes, we want to keep the current code list. Click yeah, and there's my pointer. Without having to rehack it, I can just bring it over to a new cheat engine. Also, if somebody else has a code like this, sometimes when you go to the cheat engine website, uh, they they store their cheats on XML, which is a document format. And when you click on download, it just takes you to this site uh, and just, or just, I'm sorry, just shows it to you in like WordPress or, or whatever in just a uh, notepad format. Basically, all you have to do on, on Cheat Engine is when they have a download site, is just right click on the download, click save as, uh, make sure to save it as a .ct, and it'll save it as a cheat table instead. So that's how you do it. You can do that in Notepad. Real easy. Uh, I've never really seen anybody actually teach that, but uh, that's how you can do that. So getting back to what we're doing now. Let's go ahead and close that on out. We're going to be using this so I can have one hit kill. As you see now, our experience is at zero. And the next time we use, or excuse me, next time we go up a level, we have to break 375. So what we need to do first is just find these two values. Normally, in 99.9% .9 of games, those values are going to be close together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Whoops, sorry about that. I accidentally hit my hotkey and turned the recorder off. Let's uh, get back to what we're doing here. What I'm going to do first of all is we're going to go ahead and search for a zero value. Bring that over here so I can see it. Normally I don't recommend searching for a zero. I, I recommend going ahead and getting some points on there. Sometimes in these bigger games, like these 64-bit games, uh, if you put in a zero value, it's, you're going to be sitting there a while. So... But for this game here, it's no big deal. I'll just go ahead and do it that way. Just try to get it done a little quicker. So what we need to do is we want to go up there and attack a monster. And that will give us some XP. Then we can uh, search for the uh, XP address. Ah, crap. I killed two of them. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well. Now we went up to 20. I only meant to kill one. Whoops. By the way, we are scanning on a value type of four bytes. Uh, and we're using exact value. Now, in a different game, uh, these XP's may be on a float value. Could be on a double. Sometimes you don't know. You may want to just go with value type all. And sometimes these numbers won't actually be what the display is showing you. Sometimes they'll be encrypted. Sometimes they'll be just a totally different value. Sometimes you may have to search for XP using a known value and just go from there. You know how to find values. I'm not really going to go into it. But uh, mostly it's the same way. Once you find the address, then you can just take this lesson from there. All right. Let's go back to our, and we went up to 30. And we got one, so good. We ain't got to really mess with it that much. 
All right. <clears throat> now, I know already that this is our XP. And if we need to test it, we'll just go ahead and change it to, let's change it to 44. Just an offbeat number there and see if it changes over here. We'll go back to our stat screen, and it does. Good. What we want to do is we need to find out what's writing to this address. Actually, no, not yet. Not yet. I want to do something different first. Let's go ahead and copy that address. Let's go to memory view and go to dissect data structure. Well, actually, no. We can't do that yet. My bad. I don't know what I'm talking about. Just stick with me. Let's just do this. Let's go find another monster. Let's go ahead and find out what writes to that address. Make sure that. Let's close that on now. Let's go ahead and find out what's writing to that address. <clears throat> I just remember it ain't going to do no good to uh, go to dissect data structure if we don't know what offsets to look at. So <laughs> that's going to kind of shoot us in the foot there. So I'm sorry about the lag. Uh, my recorder makes my, uh, my computer lag a little and I'm on a laptop. So. I think there's a monster over here. Yep. Yeah. Come on, dipshit. There you go. There. And we went up another 10. There we go. Good. And we show two different addresses here. Uh, but we know that this is the one that's writing because actually it's adding to what we already had. So it's just storing the value in offset 24 in RSI down here so we know it ain't the top one we know it's this one because it's adding to what we already have and that's a little tip to look for something like that not all of them do that but you know you can kind of ascertain which one is your true XP and we definitely know this one is it so let's go ahead and take a look at it we need to memorize that that is on the offset of 24 now we can go to our dissect data structure but you uh, just right click on the address or you can control D it. It'll bring up this screen here. We're just going to copy the address that we found in here. Minus 24. Oops, my bad. Minus 24. Like that. And what that'll do is that'll separate it from the offset. Uh, show us all the offsets and it'll just be at a base value which actually it'll be just zero zero here on the end but this is also another way to do it instead of just doing it yourself manually. And we're just going to define new structure. Click on yes and OK and let's just take a look at what we got here. What we want to do is we want to go to that offset 24 because that's where it's storing our value as we see right here and also right here is the address is storing our XP in offset 24 in the memory structure of RSI alright so let's go to 24 and look at this look at what's right underneath it 375 I wonder how much we got to go up before we hit another level you see that? You see what I mean by usually they're close together. Sometimes they may be down the list, maybe a little bit more, but usually you'll see your XP and your max or your cap. It's called a cap, actually. And um, you'll see your cap right underneath it. Usually it's real close to it. We're going to be using both these offsets, by the way. We're using 24, and we got to memorize that 28. That is our cap. That is our XP cap. And we're going to go ahead and get right to script writing. And I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to be talking about borrowing a place in memory off, off a stack. And we're going to use it to serve our purposes. And then we're going to put it back where it needs to go. But first of all, we just need to get up a script. So we can uh, manipulate it. So we know we need to manipulate this right here on how it's adding our XP. So let's go ahead and click on auto assemble. And we're just going to go ahead and click enable and disable. 
and we're going to go with an AOB injection, which is an array of bite scan, which is more accurate, a lot better than any other method. And I'm just going to uh, label it XP. Now, we got to think about what our goal is. What exactly are we trying to accomplish first? What we want to do is every time this value writes, we want it to always write to where our cap is, maybe over our cap. And we want it to write to where it's always going up a level. Every time XP hits in here, it's somewhere else in memory. It's checking that XP against that cap. If it's higher than that cap, then it changes the cap to a higher number. And that signifies what the next level is going to be, the next cap. So we want it to keep writing the cap to our value over. We're going to have it add to what we already have, and we want it to put the cap in there. So 375 added to 54 next time. You see what I'm saying? And then the new cap is going to write into this offset and over and over and over again. And every single time the cap changes, it's going to be stored in the same RSI location at offset 28. So we're going to use that. I hope I haven't confused you, but just stick with me. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to do this. <clears throat> now if we look at our this is a snapshot of what's going on up here in memory okay it's doing its calculations and everything of that nature it's using EDX EAX is being added to EDX and usually that's what uh, our XP is so EAX is putting our uh, new calculations into EDX and EDX is doing this mess here and then it's coming down here and writing the new XP which EDX is storing the new XP like 10 when we killed the creature it's saying okay he just made 10 XP and it's adding to what we already have in XP okay so EDX is carrying the new value that's being added to our number so we need to manipulate EDX. What we want is we want that offset 28 to write into EDX before it gets here. Let's bring that back up. I know it gets a little confusing. I'm trying not to confuse anybody. This is our current XP. This is our cap. What we want... Uh, let me move that out of the way here. What we want, getting back to our snapshot, this is our snapshot. EDX is carrying that new value, whatever the XP is. For killing one monster, it might be 10. For killing a, a boss, it might be 50. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's carrying different XP values and adding it to our current offset at 24. And what we want it to do is we want it to add to our XP, to 54, whatever our cap is, plus whatever the monsters or whatever XP we have in EDX is. And I'm going to show you how to do that, so just stick with me. Like I say, EDX is carrying the new value, and we want to add our cap to that value. Whatever EDX is, if we killed a monster, it's 10, and right now it's at 375. We want that 375 to be added to that monster value, then we're going to add that to our XP. So we need to make sure we know what both offsets are. We know 28 is 375, and we know that 24 offset is our XP, which is at 54. We need, we're going to use... All this data structure is RSI, by the way. We need to write EDX, or we need uh, a new value to go into EDX, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about barn another place in memory so we can throw our cap into it then have that part of memory write to EDX, and then have EDX write to our memory. And I'm going to show you how. <clears throat> Sorry about that. We do that with the command push. 
And what that does, we can assign a new place in memory, which I'm going to use RDX, which is a valid place in memory for this game. And what it does, whatever RDX is right now, it's going to save it, and then it's just going to give us give it to us fresh for this string of code. And we can use it to use however we want to. All right. What we need to do is we need to move RSI plus 28 into this new spot in memory. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the command move. RSI plus 28. Oops. Plus 28. I'm sorry. You got to do it in reverse. RDX. Because it works backwards. It moves whatever's on the right side of the comma into whatever is on the left side of the comma. I always remember that. If it's moving, it's moving this value and replacing an old one in this one. If it's add, it's keeping this value and adding to it. If it's subtract, it's subtracting to it and so on and so forth. So if I was to put add, it's going to keep whatever's in RDX and add that to it. We don't want it to do that. There's actually nothing in it right now because we pushed it off another stack. It's fresh. So when we move this into RDX, it's going to move that cap into there. And now what we want to do is we want to add whatever EDX is. We want to add RDX to it. So if like, we killed a monster and EDX is storing the XP of 10, it's going to add the cap to that value. You see what I'm saying? So that way it's going to go higher than 375, which will give us our new cap. And now EDX will write that new higher value into there. That's the cap plus the monster XP into our value. And in essence, that will make our levels go up. Okay, I know it's confusing. I really understand, and that's why I'm trying to go slow. You may need to watch this part a couple of times, and, and when you go in there and do it yourself, I, okay, I get it. All right, I get it. You know, sometimes you just have to have a little bit of hands on, and you understand it. Okay. Now we need to give RDX back to whatever stack that the computer's pulling it off of, and it'll write whatever was in it before back to it by popping it back to there so we just put pop pop it back to where it came from we're popping it off our stack back to where it came from we don't know where it came from okay we don't know where the computer pulled it we don't know what was in rdx when it pulled it off there the game is using this place in memory for other things as well so that's why we had to push it off a stack we made the computer look for a stack that RDX is on that we can use. It saved it, whatever the value was, and gave it to us. Gave us that spot in memory to use here. It performs our calculations, and then we push it back onto the stack it was already on. Okay? You can think of a stack like a stack of books. RDX was on top of a stack somewhere in memory. And the computer says, okay, I need an RDX. So it goes to the RDX section. It sees an RDX on top, says, okay, and it looks at the value. says, I need to push this off this stack and put it on his stack of books. This is my stack of books right here. You see that? This is my stack. My EDX, that's the start of my stack. That's the bottom of my stack, and I put RDX on top of it. I only have two books I'm using here. And also, actually, I have three books. I have RSI. Got three books. Sorry about that. So I have RSI, EDX, and now I'm borrowing another book. And I blanked the pages out. But I made sure that it was saved somewhere else. That way, when I give them back their book, the pages are automatically going to put whatever was in there back in there. That's another way of putting it, I guess. <laughs> Very confusing, but trust me, it's, it's not really that hard. It's definitely not rocket science. It's just... It's just new, and it just takes a little get to know one, okay? But that's what it's doing. We just want to we just want to borrow their notebook for a minute. We're taking their pages out, giving it to them, and we're going to put our own pages in there. You know, kind of like one of those uh, 
like what, what what do you call them things back in high school it has rings in it and you pop it open you put your papers in there and you close it you know those binder like things okay we're borrowing somebody's binder we're taking all their papers out letting them have it and then we're going to borrow it we'll give it back to them and they can put their papers back in it you see what i'm saying so we're going to borrow it now we're putting our own papers in it here we want to put in whatever's being stored in our file cabinet number 28 so we're putting in all our papers in file cabinet 28 which is the 375 okay now we already got another book and our book we keep adding pay every time we kill a monster the computer's going in our other notebook and putting in another page saying okay 10 there's 10 in there I say, no, well, I want some more in there. I want the 375 in there. So I'm saying, okay, add that 75 from this notebook I just put in there and add it to this notebook. It says, okay. So it's adding those pages to this notebook. And now this notebook, we're saying add it to our base notebook, which is our XP over here. That's been stored this whole time. So we're just transferring pages from one book to another, from one book to another, from one book to another. And, that, and that's basically, and that's really what it is we're doing. Okay? So then it's putting the new value in there over the 375 plus 10, which would be 385, I believe. But the new cap will go up in other calculations, I think, to 450, and then that'll be our new cap at offset 28. And it just keeps going over and over again like that. And then we say, okay, well, thank you for letting us borrow your notebook. Here's it back to that stack and use it for whatever you need it for. And then when I go up, when I kill another monster, I need to borrow it again and it starts back over. That's what it's doing. That's about as basic as I know how to explain it. So there you go. And I know this lesson is a little bit long. I apologize, but this is a little bit complex, but... I just wanted to make sure that you understood what we're doing here. How to bar, how to push off another stack, and how to put it back. We're just borrowing. All right, so let's go ahead and add this to our cheat table. And that's pretty much it. It took more time to explain it than it did to do it. You really, you can do this, boom, 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 you're done. You're, you can get a level up cheat like this in less than maybe two to three minutes once you find the address just top it on out boom good you're good to go all right so we got it over here and I'm just gonna for right now I'm putting this as test level up that way if I save it later and come back to it later I know I, I still need to test that all right let's get back to our game Alrighty, let's cut our cheat on. Let's go find another monster to kill. <clears throat> Let me go back to my stat screen. Okay, never mind. That's not my stat screen. Where's my stat screen? There it is. Now we know, right now, next time we kill a monster, that should go all the way up to, uh, I think... 380 plus whatever 54 is. I ain't gonna sit there and do math in my head. So, you mathematicians, you can figure it out. All right, here's a monster right here. So when we kill this monster, we should go up a level. Now, boom! Look at that. <laughs> So we went up a level. Now let's go look. Look. It went to our next cap. Went up to 429. There we go. Okay, that's fine. Maybe it don't go back to one. I don't know. But every monster we kill or every time it gives us awards its XP, it should go up a level. Let's try it again. Look at that. Now another level. We're up to level 4 now. All right. 
sorry about that. Like I say, it's the beginning of the game, so it's kind of like a tutorial stage, you know. Yeah, there's another monster right here. Let's go ahead and get him out. I think this is, uh, yeah. Never mind. <clears throat> Alright, let's kill this guy. Boom, look at that. Went up another level. And we're just going up level after level. Every time we get XP, look, we're already up to level 6. And, it, and it'll just keep going like that, too. Every time we get XP, we're going to go up a level. And that's basically how you do it, fellas. That's, that's all there is to it. I know it's a little complex when you first learn how to borrow a place in memory off another stack. It confused me, too. And uh, then I had it explained to me the way I explained it to you. Kind of similar to that, anyway. And it made more sense to me. And then I just played around with it until I really understood it. And that's what you're going to have to do too. You know, that's what I recommend. Just get some hands-on, play around with it, and, and you'll see. All right. But basically, we learned two lessons in one. We learned how to increase levels. We learned how to borrow memory from stack. And we're just going up level at level 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 every single time. So you see the code works. And that's how you do it, fellas. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. If you need to go back and rewatch the explanation or anything, please feel free to do so. Also, I will leave the download link to my personal cheats for this game. The version is spe uh, version specific. It is for the uh, definitive version 1.0. Uh, you're welcome to use them. I have not... As of this date, uh, November 9, 2015, I have not finished them yet, so it will be on a later date. But if it's well past that, it should already be down there. Help yourself if you want them. They're already done for you. All right? But if you're wanting to learn this stuff, uh, this is the route to go. You fellas take care of yourselves. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, enjoy yourselves. That's what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas. Take care now. That was a hard lesson to explain, I got to admit, so. Oh good, look at this. We're gonna go up look how we'll go at levels now. Boom, look at that. <laughs> Level up! <laughs>